The style data is your friend. Don't just let all those outfit photos go to waste. Use them to create outfits you know you'll love. Hi, I'm Gabriella Ruda, your host for the Style POV podcast, and I'm here to help you learn to trust your own fashion instincts, hone your authentic style POV, and find strength through style. The four pillars of outfits and how to use them. Think of your outfits like a chair. It has four legs. They need to be the same height and balanced and strong enough to support whoever sits in it. We don't want a chair with uneven legs. You'll tip over. We don't want a tiny chair that you can't sit in comfortably or fails to hold you up. We want a chair that we can sit in comfortably. Building an outfit is a lot like building a chair. It has to have four main legs or pillars to hold you up and keep you comfortable and happy. Those pillars or legs in an outfit are your clothing lines, your clothing shapes, your clothing color, and your clothing details. We want to find the right chair for you. It may be a tufted Victorian armchair or a rustic farmhouse table chair. The aesthetic value and expression of the chair comes through balancing out these legs. Now, different style systems may help you in these areas or confuse you. It's not about making broad generalizations that your style lines chair will be the kibby system and your details pillar or leg will be your Kitchener essence because your mileage may vary with each system, which is why it's incredibly important to not be tied to, quote, one system gives you all the answers, unquote, but rather a take what works and leave the rest approach. If a lot is working, great. If you only got one nugget of style input, also great. But here we are backing off the nomenclatures and being a bit more analytical. We're using our own style data, i.e. our daily outfit photos, and we are separating them into winners, the meh outfits, and the losers. We take a couple winners and we take a couple losers. Again, you get to decide this. You get to pinpoint what you like and don't like. And you aren't even thinking about the pillars just yet. Just scroll through that daily outfit photo album and quickly say yes, meh, or no. Then we want to start looking at what each of the photos have in common. You may not get all four pillars in one data set, but ideally we are starting to look at let's say five to 10 images in each category. We want a decent sample size, and if our recent outfits aren't doing it, we really can pull from the past year. I wouldn't go too far back though, because we are making decisions for your style now, not 15 years ago. I want you to listen to the rest of this podcast, but also keep in the back of your mind, I put out a quick video on my style pillars and how I got that data and some of the new input. So that's there when you finish listening to me in this episode. Now, there are some broad objectives with each pillar or leg. And then over time, we want to refine and get more nuanced. But in the beginning, try to think big picture. So what is our first leg? Now, this is in no particular order. They all had the same weighted value at the end of this. Let's discuss style lines first. This isn't confined to Kibbe. In fact, the concept of style lines have been around forever. They are the outer lines of your clothing. They do not include anything internal within the garments. If you're into kibby, the goal, in my opinion, is finding those style lines that match or harmonize with your body's natural line. But in the general sense, what are the lines doing? Are they sharp and holding their structure? Are they exaggerated and big? Are they soft and fluid? Are they restrained and curved? You may opt to use your kibby ID as a reference for this, but a lot of value can come when you look at your own clothes. We are getting a little bit nitpicky here, but if you laid those pieces on the floor and you looked at the other lines of the garments, Would you see a crisp line? Would it be soft lines? Imagine if you were to draw the shape of the garment. What types of lines would your pencil be making? We are just getting a sense for what your garments typically have. And if you're like, well, I have a bit of everything, that's okay. We will hone it down over time. And at some point, consider, potentially, specific lines within specific categories. But here we are just trying to see, what are we working with? We want to consider evaluating the line type like straight, refined, curved, line direction, like vertical, horizontal, diagonal, and how the lines are formed. Are they decorative or part of the base structure, like a straight cut shirt with a ruffled collar? If this is getting too technical, just start with some basic observations. There really are no wrong answers. And remember, this leg is only about the outside lines of your garment or individual clothing piece. It does not consider anything inside the garment. We will get to that shortly. One thing to note is if all your outfits you're evaluating are from one category, like all dresses, it may be trickier to get a true view. 
While I don't want you pulling meh outfits into your yes pile, it might be good to notice this and take note. What would these lines do in my casual styles or my pants styles? So for my style, the lines of my outfit are longer visually. They tend to have some soft curve shapes and widen or emphasize the upper shoulder line. They tend to be straight or angle out after my hips end. And if the neckline closes tightly, the shoulder seams extend to a broader line. Remember, this is general. We're talking about broad themes. Sometimes you will tweak a style line for a specific outfit, but the goal is to get broad strokes and define your own style toolbox. Next up, we have style shapes. We can have all different types of lines or silhouettes, but let's look at what shapes they are creating, both along the outline of the outfit and the inside of the outfit. We can have tubular shapes, another name for straight shapes, all the way through. We can have large or small triangles or combos of these. We can have inverted shapes like a T-shape or inverted triangle. We can have bell shapes or full rounded shapes or circles. Like a big circle skirt would be a fully rounded circle. If we consider my style, I prefer tubular straight shapes and some hourglass shapes. Please note, this does not mean I'm calling myself hourglass in the traditional body typing system. It means that if we look at what shapes are being created by my outfit, we have some volume or horizontal lines at the shoulder, the lines nip in at the waist, and then they go out at my hips. Putting all those lines together, you create an hourglass shape. And if you're having trouble visualizing this, I have some examples in the show notes article to help. We aren't just looking at the shapes of the whole garments, but what internal shapes are we seeing? Things like pockets, yokes, plackets, cuffs, sleeves, or things that create points of interest within that silhouette. Do we have closely spaced shapes within the garment, like patch pockets with a button fly on jeans, or widely spaced shapes like a large open floral print? Let me emphasize this one more time. We don't need all the answers. We just need to start making some observations from our data to keep pushing us forward. Next up, we have color. I just finished my Psy Art training and boy was it an illuminating experience. It really showed me while knowing color theory and knowing palettes, applying it to the human face is very nuanced. And I made some wrong choices previously, but we will do a video to get into all of that. But color impacts our outfits, duh. They are one of our legs. You take the same outfit in dusty mauve and bright coral, not only will they communicate different things, but if you know your season, they match the colors in your face and help hold up your face when wearing the right color, instead of that floating head effect. If you're not into seasonal color analysis or you're still trying to figure out your season, you can still look at your daily outfit photos and see, how am I using color? What colors do I gravitate towards? How do I like the energy of my outfits to appear? Is there a technique of color that I prefer, like gradation, color blocking, or monochrome? Now that I've had training and analysis, I tend to lean towards saying, knowing your seasonal color creates one less variable here to worry about. You know you have a leg on your chair. And determining how you might use that color can be your focus, or what parts of your palette feel in line with your style goals can be prioritized. We want these to be four separate legs of our style because we want to explore them separately and then combine and test them together. If we jump into how does it all work together, we have trouble determining a standard to compare it to, and we can throw the baby out with the bathwater. In my own experience, I did this. I tried warm, bright colors in shorter, perkier, gamine styles and said it all doesn't work, or used a couple bad photos as a determining decision. And everyone said I was a summer, so I thought, okay, that could track, I can see it. But after analysis, I'm a bright spring. If you're shocked, we will discuss it in a future video on YouTube. But after that analysis, I have no doubts. Color was always my weak leg, and I kept exploring and exploring the summers with no real aha moments. So I thought, maybe I just have a stool instead of a chair. But nope. Which brings me to a quick disclaimer. Crowdsourcing is not always the best way. And if things aren't clicking, it may take some self-reflection and abandoning your initial preconceived notions. Anyway, if you're starting with a stool, don't worry. The building can take time. Okay, so we're looking at outfits and trying to see, do I like gradated colors? Do I like color blocking? Do I lean on neutrals? Also considering, where do I want this to go? Would I like to shift more towards this instead of that? The style data is your friend. Don't just let all those outfit photos go to waste. Use them to create outfits you know you'll love. And finally, we have the detailing or finishes, our last leg or pillar. This leg can actually be a bit more expansive, and it can be helpful to build this leg slowly. And you might find in this section you have a bit more back and forth in the development phase. The details are really important and can take a while to see correctly. 
They're there to help you balance out your other legs, but also help you nail the aesthetic you desire. It includes scale, textures, accessories, makeup, and hair. Obviously, this is a spectrum. You may have a go-to hairstyle for every day, but go a bit more glam when you dress up. But we want all of them to feel connected and like they belong to the same person. And only you get to decide that. Scale is the relationship between all your style details and how they relate to your body and other elements. Do you like large scale prints with big jewelry? Or maybe you like tighter, sharper patterns on your long style lines. This can also include textures because a blue dress in satin is saying something different than a blue dress in linen. Could they both be part of your details pillar? Yes, but we want to get an idea of the range we prefer. Some people will be more narrow. I like natural fibers, cottons, linens, whoa, that's it. Others will prefer larger spectrums, but can still determine the similarities across their spectrum. And if it's very broad, that's okay. We just want to see where are we at right now. Then we can include what types of accessories we like, what is their aesthetic, common threads, shapes, lines, vibes, etc. Some people want a structured bag, but like their clothing lines to be fluid. That's all okay. Remember, we are all building our own chairs. And you may find someone else's chair ugly. That's okay. You're not sitting in it. When reviewing our outfits, sometimes it's hard to see all the yeses, especially if we are in the messy middle. So that's why we also made a loser outfit list. These aren't necessarily ugly outfits, they just don't contain the materials for your best chair. So if you're struggling with this, do the same ex exercise with each of our four legs and add some no's to your list. And I have a simple worksheet linked in the show notes where you can start adding your answers, but it's also totally fine if you just write it out on a blank sheet of paper. But just be aware that if you add it to your no list, that this can change given more style input. For instance, color was my weakness. I added no bright warm colors. <laughs> I know, I know. So now I'm rebuilding that leg with a stronger foundation. The other legs aren't really changing much, which is why it's great to think of it this way. They are all helping support the best you, but it's okay to rebuild, adjust, or tweak. And with more outfit data and more new style input, you get more answers and refine your pillars or legs. And if you're like, I have no legs, no style data, what do I do? You start. I talk a lot about forward motion. We want to keep our style trajectory going. If you're sitting there mulling over what is perfect, you'll just be more confused. Let's keep building so that we can see the design of our chair instead of just staring at our raw materials wondering, what might this be? And if you're wondering, but Gabby, I know you purged a lot of warm brights from your wardrobe, what now? Do I regret that? Absolutely not. I gained so much style data and confirmation of my other legs during that process that I have a stronger foundation. And this will just allow my stool to look more like a chair now. And when you get new style input you like, like color analysis or finding a neckline you love, the tendency can be to go on a shopping trip. But shopping needs to be intentional, and when you expand or overstuff your closet, we get the paradox of choice. We think we want 26 jam selections, but we actually feel less satisfied when we pick from 26 than when we pick from four jams. So more and more isn't letting you see your clothing inventory. So if you're like, where do I even start? Start with a closet audit and start eliminating some easy no's. And start taking those daily outfit photos. I know, I'm a broken record. Now, what do you do if you have an anomaly within your style data? You're like, all my favorite outfits have straight short lines with bright colors, but I have this one cute dress that is longer and softer that I really like. Don't try to make sense of everything right away. Instead, place that into a to be explored category. We need further testing for that. The more you nail down some of the broader strokes of each of these pillars, the easier you will be able to see the slight changes that, that can evolve an outfit from Yep, 50% of the way there to 85%, okay, to, oh my gosh, this is it. And while you're doing this, it's inevitable that you might think of style systems and are they lining up or are they being reflected in my answers? But I really encourage you to write these answers in your own words and look at your actual style data because we want you to see what you like. Style is a lot of self-identity work and we are here to trust our own fashion instincts and strengthen that trust muscle. So that when 50 people start telling me I can't be a bright spring, that one sweater looked horrid on me, or that true summer is a better fit because I'm not going to be flustered. I'm going to trust my process and my data and the strong foundation of verified color analysis training with an expert in their field. Which is my last boy. Ask someone a broad question and you might get 15 well-argued commenters who tell you, you're this. 
and it shapes your interpretation of your chair. Be open to constructive feedback if you need it, but always explore what you are drawn to and when a professional might be able to help. Ultimately, we want the freedom to build our own chairs to our exact specifications, but there's nothing wrong with asking questions and being open to new possibilities. I hope this helps you set up a framework to understand your style a bit better, how to use those daily outfit photos, and how to start trusting your own fashion instincts. And remember, check out my video if you want to see how I use this. Link in the show notes. Until next time. The Style POV podcast content is for general informational purposes only and should not be considered professional advice. The views expressed by hosts and guests are their own. Gabriella Ruda is not liable for any errors or omissions, and listeners use the information at their own risk.